is there's he's going to uh, uh, play a board presentation. Carl, do you want to mention about where that can be found uh, for the people on the phone if they wanted to follow along? Ah, that's a good point. Uh, Ray, don't start it yet. Um, the video is available on the uh, uh, Stockbridge uh, Central School website, the wrvsu.org uh, slash rsud website. Is that, did, I, did I get that URL right, Ray? Yes, Carl. Sorry. Thank you. Um, this is uh, 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 this is a uh, a YouTube link that uh, can be shared and uh, uh, distributed. It's uh, it's it's not private. Um, well, it's unlisted, but uh, uh, the URL is available and, and it's 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 uh, intended for public sharing, as anyone sees fit. So, with that said, go ahead, Ray. Chester Stockbridge Unified District Budget Informational Meeting. This presentation is designed to give you an overview of the upcoming 2021 budget that the board is putting forward. However, before we get into the meat of the presentation, a couple housekeeping items regarding the upcoming vote. Polls are open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, June 30th. Rochester residents should vote at the Rochester High School. Stockbridge residents should vote at the Stockbridge Town offices. Absentee ballots may be requested over the internet by going to sos.vermont.gov slash elections slash voters slash early dash absentee dash voting or by calling the Rochester or Stockbridge town offices. The agenda tonight is pretty basic. You're going to go through a general overview of the budget in this presentation. Then we're going to go live to the Google Meet for some board comments. And finally, we'll take question and comments from the public. Before we begin, however, a couple of uh, ground rules. I want to remind you that the board bylaws have rules about limiting public comment. Each resident of our district may offer one comment or question. We will allow multiple comments and questions as time permits. However, it's important to remember that the bylaws limit comments to one. Second, the board bylaws have rules about discussing private and privileged information. And finally, and most importantly, this informational meeting is solely to discuss the proposed budget for our district, not building usage nor merger consolidation concerns. The board welcomes the public's input on those issues at our next regular board meeting, which will be held July 7th, but that is not uh, appropriate for tonight's conversation. So questions like that will be deferred. Uh, thank you for your uh, consideration uh, in that. Let's begin. Our situation changed drastically the last winter. COVID-19 changed everything. It closed all the schools in Vermont. It put people into quarantine. It put the board's work on hold. This was very important because unlike a lot of school districts in Vermont, ARSA, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, doesn't vote on town meeting day. We have a floor style meeting in the, in the beginning of May. However, with a May floor style meeting not an option, we worked with guidance from the Secretary of State's office to organize a one-time Australian ballot election uh, on June 30th, the details of which I just went over. Um, the board felt it was important to hold an election uh, now, despite uh, all the concerns about uh, distancing and quarantine um, and shifting from our usual floor style ballot to an Australian ballot. The board felt it was important to hold the election because the board really felt that it was important to give the administration funding assurances so they can appropriately plan for an uncertain September. Uh, as many of you have heard, the AOE has given guidance saying that schools should be prepared to open in three different models. A hybrid model where some kids are home and some kids are at school and those populations rotate. A completely in-school model, which would be similar to business as, as usual with a number of uh, uh, distancing and health precautions taken or a completely distant model like we ended the year this year. Um, given all the uncertainties of, of, of uh, preparing and planning for that, the board thought it was important to uh, give, uh, give the, 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 the administration the ability to do that without having to worry about the 87% clause. Because Vermont statute says that if a school district does not have a past budget on July 1st, 
that district will be limited to 87% of last year's budget. Why is 87% funding a big deal? Because the board is limited in where cuts can be made. Items that cannot be cut include the SU expenses, SPED expenses, tuition expenses, transportation expenses, technology uh, uh, support at the SU level. These uh, funds re represent 40%, 44% of uh, our total budget. You can see the, the pie chart about that on page 29 of our excellent booklet. The budget has to include the expected 3% pay increase that's going to be negotiated uh, or finalized for union personnel. The uh, nearly 13%, the 12.7% health insurance increase that uh, uh, can't be frozen or, or, or changed because health insurance is provided at the state level. Basically, 87% funding means $573,113 of spending would needed to be cut from our local programming at our local buildings. In our local buildings are a good collection of kids. We have 90 kids in Rochester and 44 in Stockbridge. We have over 25% of the students attending our schools coming from the three neighboring uh, K-12 choice districts, Granville, Hancock, and Pittsfield, representing over a half million dollars of tuition revenues. And of our seventh and through 12th graders, these 74 kids, we tuition from Hartford to Middlebury, from Rutland to Randolph. The expense of tuitioning these kids is 30% of our annual budget. Those 134 kids in our two campuses are taught by 18.2 full-time uh, teaching professionals. What's important to notice about our staff is that we've managed to transition three and a half or nearly three and a half positions to being shared positions. The school nurse, the guidance counselor, the, mu the music teacher and the art teacher are both shared between our two campuses. As far as the budget you've pre been presented, it's important to note that this budget spends nearly $17,500 less than yet last year's budget dollars. And as I mentioned before about shared uh, staff model, uh, consolidating further this year has saved us 0.6 uh, uh, FTE full-time personnel savings due to using uh, that shared staff model. Despite having to cut uh, uh, some uh, field trip expenditures and uh, fund some supplies pretty leanly, uh, this budget finishes fund funding our uh, literacy program resources by uh, bringing in the resources for our fourth through sixth graders. Uh, finally, the uh, equalized tax uh, rate increase on this budget uh, the 3.89 cents uh, increase of which two cents is uh, uh, due to the uh, loss of, of uh, the merger incentives in the third year. Um, this increases the annual taxes on a $200,000 Vermont homestead by $77.83 if that taxpayer is not subject to Vermont's income sensitivity program. So we're pretty happy with where we brought this budget in. Finally, I want to explain how we got to that tax rate. Let's walk through the chart found on page 29 of the booklet. The board began with uh, the presented expenditure budget from the administration of $4,391,120 uh, uh, and 125, which is shown here at the top. Um, the uh, offsetting revenues, which are listed on page 27 of the budget, reduce the uh, education spending down to the three million three hundred and thirty nine four hundred and sixty eight dollars uh, shown in the line marked number one. That money is allocated uh, to our equalized pupil An equalized pupil is Vermont's uh, uh, equity uh, calculation. Uh, it allows uh, uh, for more spending for a high school student, less spending for a pre-K student, more spending for a, a student who's got English as a second language, more food spending for students that are uh, uh, eligible for free and uh, uh, reduced lunch. Um, our 100-some uh, our, uh, 100 kids translates into 177 uh, equalized pupils when you add in the kids that attend, the, the Rochester and Stockbridge kids that attend our two campuses uh, to the uh, 74 kids that we send uh, uh, 
uh, we send elsewhere. Uh, dividing the dividing that number uh, equals the education spending per pupil cost, which is shown in line three here uh, as eighteen thousand eight hundred and sixty three dollars and eighty five cents. The Vermont Department of Taxes has determined that one dollar of property tax yields ten thousand eight hundred and eighty three dollars of uh, education spending as shown um, by on line four. So when we divide that out, that creates the uh, equalized residential tax rate, um, dividing $18,863.85 by $10,883 uh, equals the tax rate shown on life, line five of $1.73.33. Now we take that tax rate in line five and we reduce that by the merger incentive, the third year merger, merger incentive, which is four, four cents, which is shown on line six. That equals the primary equalized tax rate, $1.69.33 cents, that is shown on line seven. This number is common for both towns. However, at this point, the common level of appraisal comes into play. The common level of appraisal is, is a, a calculation that, that uh, Vermont does to ensure that if you own a three bedroom colonial in Stockbridge, uh, or that you pay the same amount of taxes, someone that owns a three bedroom colonial, colonial on two acres in Randolph or a three bedroom colonial on two acres in uh, uh, Winooski. They look at sales over the last year, they adjust that by the types of property and the, and, uh, the state averages, and that produces uh, a factor that um, makes the, the, that tries to compensate for uh, inequities across the state in, in property appraisal. So Rochester's uh, uh, equalized, uh, or CLA is 1.09.89. Uh, a house in Rochester is worth 109.89% of the state average. A house in Stockbridge is worth 100.7% of the state state average. What that means is that is that that common district wide $1.69.33 equalized tax rate when modified for each town's individual CLA becomes $1.68.16 for Stockbridge and $1.54.09 for Rochester. That will be the tax rate you will see on your property bill. Thank you for bearing with me for this basic explanation of how we get to your, how we developed our budget, why we developed our budget, and how we get to your tax rate. Tax rate. And at the end, uh, before we go to the live session, I just wanted to say thank you all for all you do to support all of our kids. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, uh, uh, Ray, for uh, playing that. Thank you all for uh, 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 sitting through that. Um, I hope it was, uh, I, I hope uh, you found it informative and it, it, it explained things. That'll certainly make our question and answer uh, uh, go faster. Um, before we do that, though, we have uh, 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 some board comments uh, that we hope will answer some of the things that uh, uh, we feel are relevant. Um, uh, Lindy uh, Stetson, the, uh, uh, one of the two co-principals who's based out of the uh, Stockbridge campus, is going to talk about uh, our literacy uh, spending. So when you look at our budget, line item by line item, you may have noticed quite a increase in spending under the general elementary books and periodicals line item. And that is to truly um, finish funding to the best of our ability, uh, our literacy initiative that we started this past year and up to before we dismissed for distance learning, we had seen significant improvement in our students. Um, the SU helps with Medicaid funds to fund the initiative for mostly the pre-K through grades three. Most of these funds will be used to continue funding the program for grades four through six, as well as we've started to implement um, direct instruction for students that 
uh, general instruction may have missed and these funds will help support any of those programming needs as well. Thank you, Lindy. Um, I'm sure many of you are curious about what school is going to look like uh, uh, in September and what we're budgeting and planning for. Um, we are fortunate that our other co-principal, Bonnie Bourne, happens to be heading up the SU uh, uh, reopening task force. And uh, I'd like her to, uh, she's going to give us some uh, uh, basic high level uh, overview comments about what, uh, what we're preparing for in September and what this budget is intended to support. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, as Carl said, the White River Valley Supervisory Union uh, put together a task force to begin to address the um, different scenarios under which school could open in the fall. At this point, the direction from the Agency of Education is that we will open with in-person instruction. That means youngsters will be going to school. There'll be some uh, pretty significant uh, changes to the way that we go to school. Uh, in large, uh, it will deal with uh, things like daily health checks. Um, youngsters will need to have a temperature taken prior to boarding a bus or prior to coming into school. There will be facial coverings required, um, although there is a bit of leeway in terms of very, very young children and what might be developmentally appropriate. Um, there'll be significant time, a number of times during the day when youngsters will be washing their hands, uh, cleaning. Uh, our schools have always been clean, but they'll be clean to a whole new level uh, as we work our way through this uh, current pandemic. Um, lunch lines will be uh, not allowed lunches will be served. I want to stress that schools will still be providing lunches, but it will be single service uh, packaging. Um, the state has identified uh, three different scenarios or three different types of situations uh, that we could possibly be in. They refer to them as step one, step two, and step three. In step one, it was what we just come out of this past spring. Schools are closed and uh, everyone is doing distance learning. Under step two, schools open, physical school buildings open with enhanced um, accommodations in place, such as the, the ones that I've just mentioned a bit ago. It's at step two that the state is asking us to reopen this fall. And then step three uh, is still going to school um, in, under the roof of the school, but with slightly less um, enhancements to it. So uh, we could go back and forth between step two, step one, step three, depending on if and to what degree uh, the virus is, is being transmitted, uh, community transmission. The very, very strong hope and actually belief is that we will not experience another closure like we have this spring in that the entire state was closed. It's believed it will be more of a geographic closing. So for example, if there is um, a significant, if there's a, a rise in the number of cases in a community that appears to be from community spread, then the schools in that particular location will be closed. So for example, if something crops up down in Brattleboro, uh, Rochester will not necessarily be closed. If something crops up in Rochester, Fairfax schools won't necessarily be closed. So it's more of a regional approach. Um, the task force has five different work groups. They're hard at work. Um, we expect to present uh, in a set of recommendations to the incoming superintendent uh, by the uh, very, very early in July, end of June, early July. The last thing I'll say that I, that I would stress is that the um, guidance that we've been given today might change next week. It might not change next week. We've continually been told to have plan A, plan B, and possibly a plan C. So we are working on a number of uh, scenarios. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, Ethan, are you out there somewhere? Hmm. Did anyone try to get in touch with them? I emailed him just after this started, and I haven't heard back. Okay. Um, 
Ethan, uh, Ethan was going to uh, 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 make two comments. Um, the first of which was that the board wanted to uh, 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 take this time, um, since this is really the last 2019-2020 uh, 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 school year uh, public meeting where we can where we can say this. The board wanted to to uh, acknowledge and uh, respect all the work that both uh, Bruce Labs, our superintendent who is leaving, as well as Deb Matthews, who uh, has been a longtime SPED coordinator for families in this area, in uh, special education coordinator for families in this area. Here's Ethan, here's Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, Deb, and, Deb and Bruce are, uh, are, are both uh, uh, moving on. Um, and we really wanted to uh, uh, recognize and acknowledge all the work they've done for the children and the families in our area. And Ethan, you'll say this much better than me, so go ahead and please, uh, 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 please take over for me. Um, uh, sorry, just came on. My son was bit by an ant just before I was about to uh, come on. Um, so I'm here, but had to take care of that. Um, well, I've known Deb Matthews for a very long time, um, a very close family friend for years, a teacher at, uh, at Rochester, a really innovative teacher and a great time in Rochester schools where she was bringing in lots of other programs and um, one of the sort of top teachers of the time. And then after years of that, she changed over to special ed, both first at the school and then at the supervisor union. I believe it's something like 30 years of work here, really focusing on the kids, um, really being an advocate um, for everyone. And uh, I, you know, she's done a great job for us for years. And I, I have, um, I'm, I'm very fond of her and very glad uh, for her to have earned her retirement and taken her place there. Uh, Bruce, I, I've known for less time, but um, I feel that the RSUD board sort of bonded with Bruce early on um, as we came on after the uh, transit, after the merger and just always had a, a great um, rapport with him. Um, he was straight with us. He was um, communicative. Uh, he had the same values as us totally about literacy um, and, and, and work. And we could talk about problems and disagreements and work it through with him. Um, I also wanted to say that I think uh, Bruce did an incredible job through this COVID crisis um, as a communicator, as keeping people together. I really think in some ways, though it was a terrible time, it really brought the whole supervisor union together, his weekly meetings, and uh, um, did a great job. So both of them are going out on a high point. We're very grateful to them and, uh, and wish them all well in the future. Thank you, Ethan. I appreciate that. And it's been an yep. honor and a pleasure to work for the supervisory union and district. I'm very grateful uh, to all of you for the work you've done. And I appreciate uh, the kind words. Um, I'll miss all of you. So oh. thank you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah, we will miss both of you very much. Oh, oh. Just hope you'll stay out of the papers and be in there for good things. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jenny uh, far with Bruce? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you for that comment, Ethan and uh, Megan. You had a comment you wanted to make as well. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Can. Thank you. I just want to take a, a just a little moment to thank our students, our caregivers, teachers, staff, and administration for all the hard work they've put into our regular school year and our emergency online school year. I was humbled and just thankful that everyone scrambled and worked hard to create education and caring and keep our kids connected through these unprecedented times. Um, I just well, I lastly want to thank. Um, our two towns, community members who value and support local rural education in our small value, I just, our valley. I just, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, Megan. 
Okay, so uh, I believe that that concludes our board comments. Um, I'm now going to go into question and answers. And the way we're going to do this is the method that has uh, worked across the uh, SU for these informational meetings, which is I am going to go down the uh, roster of uh, all the 32 people that are not board members that are on this call and uh, just go one at a time and ask them uh, if they have, uh, have a question or comment. And depending on how long it takes to go through it once, we'll consider uh, uh, whether we'll uh, go back to the top and start again. If we give everyone the chance to have a second comment, everyone will have a chance to have a second comment. We're not going to uh, just say we'll take comments till, till, till a, uh, a, a fixed amount of time. Um, again, to remember, to, to, to remind people what we said uh, at the top of the meeting, we have a, our, our regular monthly board meeting will be held July 7th. There is an open public comment session at that meeting. The comments that we're going to be, or the, the questioner comments we're going to be responding to uh, at this time will be uh, uh, strictly uh, uh, around, uh, around the budget and uh, what we're asking uh, uh, the voters of both communities to approve uh, on June 30th. Do I leave anything out, board members, before I uh, open the gates? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Ray. Um, it is, for, for those of you on the phone, it is star six to unmute and uh, a star six to mute uh, uh, when, when you're done. Um, so the first caller on the list is star 11. If your phone number ends at 11, uh, you have a chance to have a comment. Unmute yourself and uh, uh, make yourself heard, or I'm going to wait a few seconds and move on. Okay, we're going to star 29. If your phone number ends in 29 and you have a question or a comment, please star six to unmute. Okay, uh, star 52. If your phone number ends in 52 and you have something you'd like to ask us or, or, or tell us, uh, please unmute with star six and do so. Hi, Carl, it's Beth Dolly. Um, my question may not be um, approved, but we are looking at the budget and 5% of the budget is the buildings and yet we are not allowed to talk about the buildings? Um, as in, in, in the context of this meeting, we are not going to discuss uh, the, the, the futures of the buildings or, or what is going on. What I can say about the buildings is that the budget um, we is, 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 has, has been built the way we always build a budget, which is to be both um, lean as well as conservative. If you look back historically, we have always returned uh, three to 5% of the total budget as, uh, as an overage. If you look on page 27 where the revenues are, you'll see that the first item at the top of that page is 143,000, I think, of, uh, of uh, a surplus being returned. So we built the budget based on paying for the buildings like we're going to have to pay for the buildings through a winter for the next year based on our, pre our, on our previous usage. So that's where we're at. We are, of course, uh, uh, working and having conversations and, and moving things forward. We're putting the, uh, we're getting the, we, we finally got a PDF version of the uh, building committee. The engineering study that was uh, commissioned by the board is being put on the website uh, I believe it was put up uh, this week. Um, we got we, we we finally got the clearances and worked out how to get the PDF up, PDF up there, so the communities can read uh, uh, what analysis been has has been done of the building. And again, Beth, you are welcome to come to our meeting on July seventh, and we can we we can discuss that. But we budgeted for, you know, the buildings being as they are because we can't we 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 we, we can't. Uh, to, to, to do otherwise would be would be imprudent. I really hope we resolve the issue in, in, in a way that returns a bunch of a bunch of money to the surplus for the 21-22 year. Thank you, Beth. Um, that was you were star 52, I think. Or were you star 68? I'm 52. Okay. Uh, star 68. <laughs> Um, we, we, we uh, advanced. Carl, Carl, yeah, I'm 68. It's Tim Pratt. Hi, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Um, so 
if you divide the 202 kids into the 4.3, that comes to 21,250, not the 18,000. I was just wondering uh, how you can explain that when it's actual costs that we need to be voting on. Thanks. Uh, Tara, do you want to uh, help address Tim's, Tim's question? The equalized per pupil, the per pupil spending is based on, if you look on page 29 of the workbook that was sent, the budget book that was sent around, you take your budget expenditures, you less your offsetting revenue, which gives you the Act 68 education spending. So that's the amount that's to be collected by taxes and from the education fund. And you divide that by your equalized pupil. And that is what gives you your education spending per pupil cost of the 18,863.85. So that number is not based on your enrollment as it stands today. That is a formula that is calculated by the Agency of Education that, as Carl explained in the presentation, has weighting factors for the different levels of students. And that is only for your resident students. That does not count students that you receive in on tuition. The board in January set an announced tuition rate of that 16444 so that number is what's used to charge the schools that send students to your district. And then at the end of the fiscal year, usually in December, the Agency of Education sets the allowable tuition rate, and that can be higher or lower than what the board sets as the announced tuition rate. So those are actually two different numbers that come from two different sets of information I'm not sure if that explains it or not. Thank you, Tara. Um, it's also important to note about um, uh, the allowable tuition is that um, allowable tuition doesn't include um, uh, when, when, when you calculate what, what you can charge as an, as an allowable tuition, you're not just allowed to set a number um, wherever you want it. Um, and then as a matter of fact, the uh, Agency of Education will if your allow, allowable tuition ends up being three or three and a half percent or three percent above or below their calculations, you're either issuing refunds or, 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 or collecting. But the allowable tuition does not include special education expenses or SU expenses. It's really trying to look at just what are the expenses of, of, of a local building. So that's where the allowable tuition ends up being uh, and, and is this way pretty much across the state uh, a little bit lower than the actual tuition that, that is charged to town residents. Um, all right, and Tim was uh, star six eight, so star six nine, um, star six to unmute if you'd like to have a question or a comment. Hey, Carl. Um, <clears throat> I was, it was my understanding that they are thinking that the kids will have to have music and art in one room. Um, and not travel Sorry, for it. Does that mean? Who are you? Uh, this is Leslie Rogers. Oh, Leslie, that's okay. I just wanted to. Okay. We 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 need to make sure that you're a Stockbridge or Rochester resident, and we know you are. Okay. Now. Yeah, I thought that you weren't doing names, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so it's my my understanding that they they're thinking that they want children to be in one area, and not move around a lot. So does that mean that they do not need the building, the second building in Rochester? If so, can we winterize that and not use it for the um, year? Oh, as I mute myself, trying to unmute myself. Um, I believe that that is still uh, uh, something that the, that the Agency of Education um, hasn't really decided. It's one of the ideas they've bounced around, but I think the best person to speak to that would be Bonnie. Sure, thank you. Um, as the guidance stands right now, uh, the art teacher and the music teacher will be going into classrooms as opposed to youngsters going to the art room or the music room. The little, the little worry that we have there is that if the virus starts spreading more 
and we have to go back to smaller groups of children, such as back to 10, um, then neither school at this point is probably large enough to hold all of our youngsters in groups of 10. Um, so space would be a challenge, staffing would be a challenge. The question would be at that point, you know, would we open or would we not? But in terms of the guidance right now, the existing guidance, youngsters will not be going to the music room and they will not be going to the art room. The other possible situation I could see happening is we're trying to get clarification. If there's a COVID positive, someone tests COVID positive after having been in a classroom, the guidance on cleaning is clear. It says you have to close the room for 24 hours and then begin cleaning after the 24 hours. It's not as clear on what happens with the youngsters. Now, my assumption is they would have to quarantine such as the situation exists right now. But that might be another situation where we would be looking for space uh, if for some reason we couldn't enter back into a classroom. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, that moves us to star eight zero. Okay, it's star six to unmute if you have something to say, the person at star eight zero. If not, we will move on to the person at star eight four. Again, uh, star six to mute, uh, to unmute. And we'll move to the person that's star eight seven. Okay, the last person that's just on a phone number is the person at star nine four. Star six to unmute if you'd like to say anything. Okay, Beth, we had heard from you. I see you've, uh, your camera face there. Uh, Bonnie, Bruce, Deb, Matthew, Ethan, Bowen, Janet Whitaker. Janet Whitaker, if you would like to uh, unmute and uh, ask a question, it's either control six or command six, depending on if you're on a Mac or a Windows. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you, Jen. Um, we now go to Joanne Mills. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You were trying to. You, I, I, you're on mute. You, it's uh, it's it's command command or control D, depending if you're Windows or Mac. Ah. Uh. That's Kim Robertson. Joanne, you're not speaking. We can't hear you. Joanne, are you on your phone? Thumbs up. Or you're on your iPhone. Okay. No, you're not. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to you while you try and figure it out. Okay. Um, so the next person on the list is Julie Grappi. Julie? <laughs> she says she's good across the table. Uh, Kathy Burns. Kim Robertson, you're up. Up, oh, Joanne. Joanne, you got on. I, I can, don't I want can to see interrupt. You. I don't want to interrupt Kim. Um, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Joanne. Okay. All right. Go ahead, um, Joanne. All right. My only thing, for, I do have two things, but I'll I'll just stick it to one. I'll stay with one. Um, the whole COVID thing, if it comes back, wouldn't, and, and you did say the children would probably end up being quarantined as well. But I mean, obviously other school systems are going to have the same situation if someone becomes sick. So we, not every school Help has me. their spare bed. So I want to say, I think that's a bunch of garbage. We have to have a spare building because of COVID. So I, I just don't understand how our school board can follow through with the same process again this year. And next year, there's going to be field trips. There might even be field trips this year. And we're going to need money. And you know that that's just money that's wasted. So that's my opinion. And, and I don't like budgets that are backed into. You find out what, you know, to stay out from under the threshold and then you back into the budget. I just think that that's not a good way to build a budget. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Kim, uh, you are next. 
Thank you. I guess I have a comment. Um, since we're not allowed to talk about uh, 5% of the budget, which is the school buildings, and now you're saying you're not going to use that building except if they need it for COVID, especially. I just have to comment and say I find it awfully convenient that the major concern of all the Stockbridge citizens is being si silenced by this board by not allowing us to discuss what is a good percent of our budget. Thank you. Um, yes, yes, the buildings are 5% of the budget. And yes, um, I'll, I'll reiter reiterate what I said before. Um, you know, the board looks at how they figure out, um, you know, what supplies cost by looking at historically what supplies cost. Um, when we look at what building upkeep costs, we look historically at what building upkeep costs. The, the fact of the matter is at this point in the budget cycle, we do have the two buildings and it would be in the board's opinion, um, inappropriate to pretend that the two buildings or that, that we could pull, not, not pretend that's, uh, that's, that, that's poor language. I'm sorry that the, the board felt it was inappropriate to presume that we could, we could resolve the issue and the board's historical, uh, perspective on budgeting is to budget for the conservative options, not to assume that it's going to be a really mild winter and we can, you know, we can, uh, uh, uh lowball heating oil because it, you know, it, it lets us add in a trip to Boston. Um, and then say, oh, well, we thought we could, you know, this heating budget would, would, would pass, but it didn't. So now we have a deficit. Um, the board has historically tried to budget conservatively, conservatively so that we have historically given back, you know, uh, that, that three, that three to 5% cushion that we've put into a budget. Like I said, if you look at page 27, we gave back the community $143,000 in this year's budget of surplus. We gave back more because we were even more conservative. We didn't know what the buildings were going to cost the year before where we gave back nearly quarter million dollars that we, that, 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 that we over budgeted. The board feels it's important to, to, you know, be lean. We don't want to over budget 15% and say, look, we gave you back a million dollars because we took it from you the year before. But the board does want to, and has historically tried to be, try, tried to be conservative about, about the way it built the budget. So it built the budget for, for uh, a worst case buildings, uh, a, a scenario. And as far as having, you know, continuing the conversation, as I've said, we have an open public uh, comment session. Uh, I believe we're going to be discussing the buildings on the agenda. We haven't put together the agenda for the July 7th meeting, but that would be a fine time to, you know, to log in. And there, there we will be having that sort of discussion. The discussion tonight is about why we're asking for the funds we're asking for to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish for our kids for the 2021 uh, 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 school year. So that's that's where we're trying to keep the focus tonight. But it's also about the budget and why it is what it is. And if we can't address areas that we're concerned, that's a shame. Okay, thank you for your thought. I believe I answered that question by saying that we historically build the budget based on previous year's outcomes and the previous year's outcomes have involved two buildings. But thank you for your thought. Um, next on the list is Nancy. Does Nancy have a comment? Nancy has some really cool looking furniture. Um, Patricia Harvey, do you have a comment? No, I don't. I would like to thank uh, Deb Matthews, if I did have a comment, um, for all of her years of service. I remember in 1993, um, when my son had cancer while still in school, um, she, she stood by him very closely and uh, he still has that teddy bear um, which shows the heart that our school system has. Um, and if I had to make any comment about anything, since this is our one opportunity a year, really, um, I would love to see us go K-8. And I know everyone might cringe at that, but uh, oh. just in the heart of the system, a couple more years on our children. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Patricia. Uh, that brings us to Samantha Demond or Diamond, I'm sorry if I'm, I just mangled your last name. And as someone with Grappy, I'm used to people mangling mine. So Samantha, if you have anything to say. 
That's okay. Um, and I don't have a comment. No. Thank you. I'm glad you stayed and listened. Um, okay, we're going to go back. We have, uh, it's only been 45 minutes. We want to do another round of questions board. Uh, Carl? Yes? Um, Bill would like to say something. Oh, okay. I, 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 yeah. I, did I skip over you, Bill? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, Carl. Um, and thanks for the presentations. It's um, nice to be able to communicate even this uh, rough time where we can't be together in the same room. And I wanted to commend the school committee for its excellent um, report, annual report. It was very, very informative. Uh, my one um, general suggestion for the future is for those of us that are getting to be a little a seeing uh, 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 challenged, uh, the, the print of the numbers might be a larger font. Um, I did want to just mention that for the last over 10 years, um, each year I've given, handed out at the school board meetings, um, a spreadsheet going the impact of the proposed school budget, um, either you're paying by income sensitivity and about two thirds of our households uh, pay that way in Vermont. And I wouldn't be surprised it's about the same in Stockbridge. And, Oh, okay. And um, the others is if you're paying by the value of your property. And, um, and I lay it out for 10 years so you can see uh, in numbers, um, in dollars and cents, how this, the school budget has impacted um, the taxpayer. Um, and I just wanted to say that I'm sorry I can't do that, but if those of you, um, I don't know if you can see me, but if you wanted to email me, at edgeeastvt at gmail.com, I will email you uh, the spreadsheet so you can see the impact of the proposed budget this year and you can go back 10 years and um, take, a, take a look at how the budgets have changed over time. And I must say that uh, when I look at the bottom line, the increases have been um, very modest. But if anybody's interested in that information, please email me, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to share it with you. Thank you. Bill, actually, if I could. I would love Carl, to. I would just, I'll put it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ethan. Yeah, I just want to say, Bill, we had, we had really hoped to have your page in there. Um, and unfortunately, and this year, you know, we learned a lot. Um, we didn't remember it until too late. Um, we tried valiantly to get it in before it went to the printers. Um, but it just didn't happen. Uh, but please know that it, uh, we find it, uh, your, your chart to be a very useful item and very much would like to have it. Um, and we'll remember it next year to get, get it much sooner so we can have it as part of the bulletin. Thank you. And actually, I was about to add that uh, uh, Janie sent, uh, sent us the link to your uh, 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 sheet. And uh, with your permission, we're going to add that to uh, – our, our website of resources so that people can just find it where they find the PDF of the annual presentation, the YouTube link for the, the, the presentation we just gave, the uh, PDF for the engineering report and so on. Great, great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, okay, board, it is, uh, it is 720. We've been at this nearly an hour. Do we want to go through another round of questions or are we uh, uh, wanting to uh, 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 move on? I put that out to all of you. Hi, Megan here. Um, I would entertain more questions if uh, if people have them. Yes. I agree. Janie, you okay? Janie? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Then we'll go back to the we'll go back to the top of the phone numbers. Uh, star fifty nine. Uh, it's star six to mute or unmute. Un 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 you you have the floor if you'd like it. I'm sorry, go ahead, Ray. Uh, Carl, I, I just um, want to make sure that the uh, callers understand that most of the area codes, of course, are 802. And when you say star 11, for example, that's the last two numbers of their number they're calling from. Yes. I know that seems obvious to us. I'm not sure that's obvious uh, to the callers. That is that is a, a very good point. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ray. I am looking at a list that shows uh, a, a, an area code and then 
a bunch of stars, and then the last two digits of a phone number. So I am calling you out by the last two digits of your phone number. So um, the, the first one on this list is the uh, star 59. Okay. Um, we now have a code of 774 for that one. Yeah. And that, uh, that could be a cell phone. Um, I'm not sure where 774 is. Um, that, you know, that's, that's me, Irene Sintef. I was just able to sign in now, so I don't right now have any questions. Okay, thank, thank you. you. 774 is a Massachusetts cell phone exchange. That is, if, if you're a Stockbridge uh, or, or a Rochester resident, we don't care where you get your cell phone. <laughs> okay, Stockbridge Common. <laughs> All right, uh, Star 11. Uh, uh, whoever's the, the, the caller that phone number ends in 11. Uh, okay, this, the, the phone number, uh, star 29. If your phone number ends in 29 and you have another comment, uh, star six to unmute. Thank you, star 52. Hey, Carl, it's Beth Dolly again. Hi, Beth. Um, the substantial increase in the health insurance is the health insurance, um, how do I want to say, shopped or is it a contractual thing? Um, Tara, are you still there? You're probably the best person to answer that question. Health insurance is part of the statewide health insurance program. It's negotiated by the state of Vermont in the teachers union, I believe. Um, Bruce may be able to confirm that. I wasn't part of that when that negotiation started. And they're the ones that dictate to each of the school districts what the plans are, what the provider is, and what the employee employer contribution requirements are they're the ones that set what our hra contributions hsa contributions which is health reimbursement account health saving account that is all negotiated at the state level and then dictated down to all the districts within the state and we've been uh, told to expect a 12.9 percent increase this year uh, which is pretty hefty but we really don't have any control over that so then I guess part B of the question is what is the employee contribution? Uh, 20%. Thank you. All right. Um, and I think Beth, you were star six, eight, correct? So star six, nine. No, Carl, I'm five, two. You're five, two. Okay. Thank you. I did that same thing to you last time, I think. Um, so the, the caller that's at uh, star six, eight, do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Thank you. The caller that's at uh, star six, nine. Uh, the caller that's at uh, star 80. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I sorry, I, I muted and unmuted and muted again. <laughs> um, yes, the, uh, I, uh, this is Leslie Rogers. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but because um, I think there was a time that said the public funds from Roche from Stockbridge is nine thousand dollars, and I think I remember that Ro that Rochester had some public funds, but they were investigating how they could use them um, with the merger. Is that true, or am I thinking of something else? Amy, you're the you're the expert on the uh, on on the Rochester fund situation. Okay. Um, yes, there are um, funds that uh, we need to actually go to probate to change the wording because it's specific to things like Rochester High School. Also, and it's um, been, has, has that happened yes. yet? I mean, it's been three years. No, it, we, it has taken quite a long time to be able to um, understand these funds and to have um, any uh, visibility of these funds. Um, so it is 
we have not gone to probate over it. Is it is a discussion that needs to happen uh, with the board uh, before we move forward with that. Okay, when that happens, um, they should probably also discuss some reimbursement um, for the last three years, correct? I think, uh, I, I think, I don't have yeah, I, I think is, I mean, I, I, as far as this budget goes, there's not been a resolution about those funds, so we're not, we're, 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 we're not uh, 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 touching them yet. As far as what will happen with them once we get, you know, uh, a probate lawyer involved and figure out what's what's going on, that is is, is yet to be determined. Thank you, Leslie. Um, star eight zero. I have a, a follow up for. I'm not sure, Leslie, if that was what your question was, or was your question in regards to the money that Starkford contributes from the Board of Trustee Public Funds. I probably have that acronym wrong. Uh, okay. No, that was that was what I was asking for. I remember them saying something about they were trying to get the the funds from Rochester, and they were. I remember them saying that they were investigating that, and I didn't know how, what had happened with it in the last three years since we keep paying and they have not. That was my question. Okay, just want to make sure. All right. I don't know if you want to Thank clarify. You. Three years. We're not in three years, but. Um. We're going to go to caller, the caller whose phone number ends in eight zero. Thank you. The caller whose phone number ends in eight seven. Star six to unmute if you'd like to make a, uh, ask a question or make a comment. Thank you. The caller who ends in nine four. Okay, Beth, we already got you from your phone number. Bill, I'm not going to skip you because you're in the bees. Um, and scroll past you again. Do you have a, a, a second comment that, that you or Marilyn would like to, to, to make or ask? You are currently muted, Marilyn. Control D or Command D to unmute. Okay. I just want to congratulate Bruce Labs and Deb Matthews and all they've done for the students in our town. Thank you. You're here. <laughs> here, here, indeed. Here, here, indeed. Thank you, Bill and Marilyn. Um, we're good to see Bonnie, Bruce, Deb. They all work here. Ethan's on, on the board. Uh, Janet Whitaker, if you had a comment, uh, uh, you're welcome to make it. Um, I do. I actually have a comment. Um, I often hear from Stockbridge residents that we're paying everything, and the budget's divided amongst all Rochester and Stockbridge taxpayers, is it not? That is correct. So I often hear that comment, and I know I am a Stockbridge resident. I'm not trying to go against anybody, but it does bother me a bit that we constantly are saying that. That's my comment. Thank you for your comment, Janet. Uh, Janie and Jenny are board members. Joanne, would you have another comment or question you'd like to make? My only question is when you talked about this budget saves us money because we're sharing the nurse and different employees, weren't, didn't we have those same people or those jobs filled before we merged? Uh, Lindy or Bonnie, you want to answer that? So we shared a, a nurse and a music teacher starting at the beginning of the merger. And next year, instead of... Um, each building having a separate school counselor and a separate art teacher, we will have a shared art teacher and a shared school counselor. So it'll reduce staffing, meaning we're not expanding either of those shared positions, either of those people's contracts. We're instead- Do we, do we have them the same amount of time as we had the other people or do we get them more often? Uh, so just like in past years, Stockbridge will have a school counselor for two days a week and Rochester will actually have a school counselor for three days a week where they had had a school counselor for five days a week. And then, uh, just like last year in Stockbridge, Rochester, or excuse me, Stockbridge will have an art teacher for one day a week. And in Rochester, the art teacher will be there one day a week, whereas this past year she was there two days a week. Is that right, Bonnie? Did I get those? Uh, 
she was yeah she was actually in art two days a week and now it'll be a uh, one day a week and she'll be one she'll be one day a week in stockbridge does that make sense joanne yes i didn't okay. understand I, I thought maybe we didn't have a nurse and now we have one because we share one i didn't really understand that because we're saving money so that's great yes that's thank awesome. you joanne Yep. Uh, Julie, do you have a comment? I do have a comment. Have a comment. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Hang, on. Hang on. I think you broke it. Right. Okay. <laughs> I think I broke it. I got to mute my husband. How exciting is that, first of all? <laughs> Secondly, I just want to highlight something that was said um, in the presentation. I understand the frustration level that's going on. I totally understand that we still have these two buildings and we don't need two buildings and we've got to figure out what to do with that. That's inc maddening. But if we vote down the budget, the school board has to cut over a half a million dollars from the budget. If we vote down this budget, it's going to impact students, it's going to impact teachers, it's going to impact the quality of education for our students. If we vote down this budget, our children will pay the price. And, may, and eventually we will get to the point where we have a balanced budget where we have the appropriate facilities, but not by cutting a half a million dollars from our budget. Thank you. Um, okay, so, whoop, no, I am unmuted. Okay, I'm not hearing you. Um, you need your headphones to hear me. Uh, Kathy Burns, you're next on the list. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Kim Robertson, do you have something you want uh... yes. oh, Sorry, Kathy. I do. Go I want to say something. I want to say something to Deb and Bruce. I want to thank you for being great leaders for me for the past few years. I've enjoyed working with both of you. Thank you so much. Here, here. Thank you, Kathy. That was uh, that, that was very, very sweet of you. You've Thank been you, uh, a, a, a dedicated para uh, since I've been on the school board. It's your 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 service to our our kids and our town is is really awesome. Thank you, Kathy, as well. Um, okay, Kim, would you have uh, something else you'd like to say? Yes, I'd like to thank all you board members. I know you work endlessly, and it's a big job, and you've done a good job at keeping the budget down. I think the whole, uh, both towns are impressed and it's a great job. Um, I would like to say also that um, if we don't want to pass, you know, not pass the budget, then the things that the citizens are talking about need to be addressed sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Lindy, Megan, Page, Nancy, do you have a, a comment you'd like to make, ma'am? Uh, okay, Samantha, you are the the uh, last person uh, who is not a board member or an employee on this list. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Samantha, you're an employee. I am an employee. Ah, <laughs> I, 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 I assumed you were a Rochester resident. Um, thank you, everybody. I think that uh, we are now uh, over an hour into this. I think that uh, um, we are uh, uh, pretty much ready to wrap this up. Uh, again, the vote is going to be held June 30th. The polls are open from 10 to seven uh, at the Rochester High School for the Rochester residents and the Stockbridge Town Hall for all the Stockbridgeians uh, or Stockbridge residents uh, in, 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 uh, uh, to, to vote. Um, absentee ballots can be uh, uh, made available uh, online uh, at our URL I don't have in front of me, but is on our website. You can also call the Rochester and Stockbridge town offices and uh, request your ballot there. Uh, thank you so much for your time and patience with this meeting. 
And uh, thank you so much for your, your civic interest and your community service. It really matters a lot whether you're, um, you know, you're, 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 you're pro or con. The point, the, the, the best, the biggest point to me is that you're all engaged and involved. And I think that's at the end of the day, what's most important is that we're all participating in our community. We're all engaged. We're all making our opinions heard, and we're trying to work together to get to the best place that we can get to in, in our current circumstances and, and, and climate. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second it. <laughs> you have to be elected to the board before you get that power. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second. Jane. Second. I so move. <laughs> Yanny has moved. Ethan has seconded that uh, the the meeting board be adjourned. All <laughs> board members uh, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All board members aye. are closed. Uh, thank you, everybody. This meeting is adjourned. We will see you at our next regular meeting on July.